One of the largest and most populous countries in Africa, Ethiopia is also one of the oldest countries in the world. It is located in northeastern Africa, in an area known as the Horn of Africa. Although it has been influenced and sometimes occupied by other nations throughout its history, Ethiopia is one of the few countries in Africa that has never been truly colonized. Area 410,678 square miles, 1,063,652 square kilometers. Population, 2020 est. 101,929,000. Ethiopia is bordered by Djibouti and Eritrea, which used to be part of Ethiopia, on the north, Somalia on the east, Kenya on the south, and Sudan and South Sudan on the west. The landscape varies from lowlands to high plateaus and the climate from very dry to seasonally very wet. Ethiopia boasts a highly diverse population, with broad differences in cultural background and traits, methods of gaining a livelihood, languages, and religions. The capital of Ethiopia is Addis Ababa. Land and Climate Land the landscape of Ethiopia is dominated by the northern end of the East African Rift System and by central highlands of plateaus and mountains that rise from about 6,000 feet 2, meters, to more than 14,000 feet 4, meters. The highlands are cut by deep river valleys, and are surrounded by hot, usually arid, lowlands. Under natural conditions the non-desert parts of Ethiopia would be grassland or forest. After many thousands of years of farming and herding, however, much of this natural landscape has been altered. More than 85% of the natural forest has been cleared, especially in the northern part of the country, usually to create fields. From the 1960s onward local and government efforts at environmental rehabilitation have led to the replanting of trees in some deforested areas. Ethiopia is served by three main river systems. The largest is in the west, and includes the Blue Nile, known as the Abe in Ethiopia, the Tekis, and the Baro rivers. These three rivers drain into the White Nile. The second system consists of the Awash River, the Lakes region, and the Omo River. A third system, originating in the eastern highlands, consists of the Shabele and Janale rivers, which flow into Somalia to the southeast. The Janale empties into the Indian Ocean, while the Shabele ends before it reaches the coastline. Climate. Although it is situated in the tropics, Ethiopia has distinct climatic regions that vary with elevation. The hot and arid lowlands at elevations from below sea level to about 5,000 feet 1, meters, the densely populated warmer uplands and the cooler uplands at about 5,000 to 7,500 feet 1, to 2, meters, and 7,500 to 10,000 feet 2, to 3, meters, respectively, and alpine regions above 10,000 feet 3, meters. Daily temperatures range seasonally from well above 100 degrees Fahrenheit 40 degrees Celsius, in the lowlands to below freezing in the cooler upland elevations and higher. Moisture is unevenly distributed across Ethiopia. Most areas have regular wet and dry periods in the year. The amount of rainfall often depends on altitude, higher areas are wetter, lowlands drier. There is also a fairly predictable annual amount of rainfall from the drier northeast to the wetter southwest. Drier areas occasionally receive much less moisture than even their already low average. Rains may start later or end earlier than usual, or storms may be separated by a few weeks, allowing the soil to dry out. Such drought is most common in the northern and eastern highlands and in lowland areas. When this happens farming and herding suffer, causing famine. Plants and animals. The vegetation found at altitudes greater than approximately 5,900 feet 1,798 meters, is coniferous forest, though much of this has disappeared because of clearing. The relatively higher rainfall and lower elevations in the southwest support extensive tracts of rainforest. However, much of this area has also suffered from deforestation for commercial purposes. Grasslands are found in the plateaus above the treeline while the lowlands have a wide range of dry zone vegetation, such as scrub and dry grass. Like many other countries on the African continent, Ethiopia has a rich diversity of wildlife, though many species have become endangered owing to human activities such as poaching and habitat destruction. Once a common sight in rural areas, lions, leopards, elephants, giraffes, rhinoceroses, and wild buffalo are now rarely spotted. 
Smaller game species, such as jackals and hyenas, are still common, however, as are antelopes, wild pigs, and a variety of monkeys, including the black and white colobus monkey, colobus gareza. The latter is particularly vulnerable to poachers, who hunt it for its beautiful coat. Three species unique to Ethiopia. The Walia ibex, Capra wali, the mountain niala, Tragilophus buxtoni, and the simine jackal, Canis semensis, are among the most highly endangered. The status of another uniquely Ethiopian animal, the gelata baboon, Therapithecus gelata, improved over the late 20th century. While still endangered, conservation efforts have helped to place it in a lower risk category. Ethiopia's bird life has also faced challenges. Of the 23 endemic species, species unique to Ethiopia, four are endangered. People and culture. Ethiopia has historically been an empire, expanding in area and incorporating new groups into the population. A major expansion of the empire in the second half of the 19th century incorporated new peoples in the west, south, and east. The result is a population of great diversity. This very diversity has always played a significant role in Ethiopia, with disagreements and problems between groups often tied to differences in language, religion, and other cultural lines. Population. The population is most densely concentrated in the highland areas. More than 80% of the people live outside cities. Some 45% of the people are 15 years of age and younger. Both birth and death rates are high. The average life expectancy at birth is about 53 years for males and 58 years for females, among the world's lowest. Language and religion Many languages and dialects are spoken in Ethiopia. The greatest numbers of people speak either Semitic or Cushitic languages and their dialects. Semitic languages include Amharic, the official national language, Tigrinya, and Gurujina. Cushitic languages include Oromo, Somali, Sadama, and Afar. In the West and Southwest some people speak Nilotic languages. Some of the Semitic languages have been written since before European influences. Various religions are represented in the country, with numerous people following Christianity, Islam, and traditional sects. Most Christians are Coptic, or Ethiopian Orthodox, Christians who follow rites similar to those of Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Christianity was introduced into Ethiopia in the 4th century and was the official state religion until 1974. Although there is often a great mix of religions in any given place, Christians tend to be the most numerous in highland areas, Muslims in the lowlands, and traditional religious groups in the south and west. There is also a small Jewish religious group known as Beta Israel, or Falasha, in the northwest. Education and social welfare. There is a long history of church-based education in Ethiopia, but modern education dates only from the early 20th century. There was limited access to classroom education until the 1960s, with no secondary level until the 1950s. Elementary schools have been built in market towns since the 1960s, making formal education more accessible to children in the countryside, but only a limited number of school-age children actually entered school. University education began in Addis Ababa in 1950, and by the late 1950s specialized colleges of agriculture and public health opened in the provinces. Education development has often depended upon aid and teachers from other countries. It is estimated that about half of Ethiopian adults can read and write. This situation has been improving with more children attending school and with the influence of national literacy campaigns. There is still a shortage of teachers and facilities, however. While there has been much expansion of the education system, opportunities remain concentrated in the major cities and towns. This is also true for many other services, including healthcare, piped sanitary water, electricity, telecommunications, and banking. Economy. Despite progress with economic reform since the 1990s, Ethiopia remains one of the poorest countries in Africa and the world. Little is produced that is not needed within the country. Most people work as farmers or herders. Traditionally farmers have worked small, scattered plots and have low harvests per cultivated area. Until 1974 most Ethiopians worked the land either as tenants, as members of a community or a lineage, or as private owners. The government officially took ownership of all land in 1975. All farming families were allotted a parcel of land, but they did not own it and so could not sell it. Agriculture. Throughout most of Ethiopia there is mixed farming, the raising of both plants and animals. 
In most areas the major crops include grains such as teff, a grain native to and commonly grown only in Ethiopia, wheat, barley, sorghum, millet, and corn, maize. In the southern half of the country, an additional main crop is insete, a banana-like plant whose starchy stem is eaten rather than the fruit. Other crops include oilseeds such as nug, another crop common only to Ethiopia, linseed, and sesame. Pulses, beans, peas, and lentils are important protein sources in the diet. Regionally, cotton, coffee, and cot, grown for a leaf that is chewed for its mild narcotic effect, are important to subsistence and cash economies. Animals raised include cattle, sheep, goats, donkeys, mules, horses, camels, and chickens. There are some areas with large commercial farms. Their products go largely to Ethiopian urban markets or international trade. When the government took the land, these farms were converted to collective, or state, farms. Their significant crops include sugarcane, cotton, and fruits from the Awash River Valley in the north, and sesame, sorghum, and grains from the East African Rift System in the south. Mining and Natural Resources The most valuable natural resource in Ethiopia is the soil. It is potentially highly productive for traditional and modern agriculture, but this potential is largely unmet. In parts of Ethiopia soil resources suffer from declining fertility and erosion. The decline results from the continuous inefficient use of the soil, including the cultivating of land that is better for grazing or that should be left fallow, or unplanted, for a while. This is partly the result of a socio-economic system that does not reward investment in soil protection and partly the result of the increasing demands of a rapidly growing population. As a consequence, agricultural production per person declined in the late 20th century. This decline in agriculture was common not only in Ethiopia but also in much of the rest of Africa. Little has been done to find possible mineral resources in Ethiopia. Those known and exploited include gold and tantalum. There is little extraction of either metallic ores or mineral fuels such as coal or petroleum. Manufacturing and trade. Manufacturing forms only a small part of the Ethiopian economy. Factories are concentrated in and around the two largest cities, Addis Ababa and Dire Dawa. Processed foods, textiles, and beverages are the major products, mostly for local consumption. Ethiopia's main exports are agricultural products. Coffee is the most significant. Other important exports are hides and skins, edible seeds, and oil seeds. The major imports are machinery, petroleum products, and manufactured goods. Transportation and communications. Until the 20th century transportation in Ethiopia was on foot or on pack or riding animals. Even with the development of mechanized transport, a high proportion of people and goods moves on foot or on the backs of animals. Central Ethiopia was connected to the Red Sea coast in 1917, when the railway from Djibouti reached Addis Ababa. This line still functions as a major mover of goods between the highlands and the rest of the world. A highway network for motor vehicles was built by the Italians during their occupation from 1935 to 1941. All weather roads connect most of the larger cities and towns, but there are few feeder roads connecting the countryside to this network. Much of the road system in the less stable areas in the north fell into disrepair or was damaged during the Civil War. Ethiopia's air transport system has enjoyed a success unparalleled in Africa. There are numerous airports located throughout the country. Ethiopia has telegraph, telephone, and postal services between the larger towns. With the availability of inexpensive battery-operated radio since the mid-1960s, radio broadcasts are received everywhere. Television reception is still confined to large cities. Government. The 1994 constitution established Ethiopia as a federal republic divided into nine states and two chartered cities. The constitution established a federal government composed of a legislative, an executive, and a judicial branch. The legislative branch consists of a bicameral, or two-chambered, federal parliamentary assembly. The upper chamber of the legislature is the House of Federation. Its members are selected by state assemblies to serve five-year terms. The lower chamber of parliament is the House of People's Representatives, whose members are elected by popular vote to five-year terms. The executive branch of the government is headed by a prime minister, who serves as head of the government. The prime minister is chosen by the political party that holds a majority in the legislature. 
The Prime Minister also serves as Commander-in-Chief of Ethiopia's armed forces and appoints a cabinet called the Council of Ministers. The country also has a president, who serves as chief of state and whose role is largely ceremonial. The president is elected by both legislative houses to serve a six-year term. The constitution provides for a judicial branch to be headed by a federal Supreme Court, a federal High Court, and a federal First Instances Court. There are also regional courts to serve the country's states. Justices in the federal courts are appointed by the House of People's Representatives, while regional judges are chosen by their respective regional state councils. Once appointed, judges are granted tenure until the age of 60. They may be removed from the bench in instances of incompetence or misbehavior. History. Ethiopia's history is virtually that of a continuous feudal monarchy. Originally centered in the north of what is now Ethiopia and Eritrea, the monarchy predated the Christian era and continued under various guises until 1974. Over the last 2000 years Ethiopia and its center of power have moved southward. The greatest expansion of the empire occurred with the conquests of Emperor Menelik II in the late 19th century. The Ethiopian monarchy was a Solomonic dynasty, claiming descent from the biblical joining of Solomon and Sheba. Anyone accepted as possessing Solomonic descent could claim monarchical rights. This caused frequent internal strife, civil wars, and wars of succession. Ethiopian history has been marked by wars with neighbors and colonial nations. In the 16th century forces from the eastern lowlands of the Horn of Africa nearly succeeded in conquering Ethiopia. Italian colonial influences expanded into Eritrea and Ethiopia in the last two decades of the 19th century, but the Italian armies were defeated in 1896 at the Battle of Adua. This preserved Ethiopia as one of the few non-colonized nations of Africa. In 1935 Italy once again invaded Ethiopia, occupying the country until 1941. Much of Ethiopia's 20th century history was dominated by Emperor Haile Selassie. He was named regent in 1916 and subsequently crowned emperor in 1930. His regency and rule were characterized by the breaking of regional feudal powers. He encouraged some movement toward becoming a modern nation and ruled until 1974, when he was deposed in a Marxist revolution. After 1974 Ethiopia had a Marxist military government run by the Provisional Military Administrative Council PMAC, also called the DERG. The DERG was rocked by internal power struggles until Lt. Col. Mengistu Haile Mariam emerged as the head of state. Under Mengistu, the DERG enlarged the military tenfold. Beginning in 1975, it also instituted a program of nationalization of industry, banking, insurance, and large-scale trade. Many Ethiopians who opposed military rule supported the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party, which fought the military regime in the cities until it was crushed in 1978. Separatist movements arose in attempts to break away from Ethiopia or to change the people or the pattern of government. The most active of these movements were in the north, in Eritrea and in Tigray. There was also warfare with the Somalia-backed Western Somali Liberation Front, beginning in 1977. Ethiopia shifted its international ties with the United States to an alignment with the Soviet Union, which became its chief source of weapons. Economic aid and foreign investment from the West dried up, while Ethiopia's own resources were consumed by the wars. In 1987 a new constitution was approved to make the country the People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. This constitution established a civilian communist government. The PMAC was dissolved, members of the new assembly, or Shango, were installed, and Mengistu became the first president of the republic. Ethiopia was struck by a major famine in the early 1970s and two more during the 1980s. More than 200,000 people may have died in the first of these. Ethiopia has been heavily dependent upon international donations to overcome starvation in famine areas, where periodic food shortages have persisted. Conflict between Eritrean and Tigrayan rebel groups and the government continued. By 1991 rebel forces controlled all or parts of seven provinces. Already facing a bankrupt economy and famine, the government saw its army fall apart. Mengistu resigned and fled the country. A transitional government, led by Meli Zanawi, a Tigrayan, was appointed in August 1991. It vowed to make the government more democratic, and it introduced economic reforms to begin privatizing state-owned businesses. 
The new government also recognized the right of nationalities to secede from Ethiopia. The Eritreans' goal, for which they had been fighting for more than 31 years, was finally realized. Eritreans voted overwhelmingly for independence in an April 1993 referendum, and Eritrea became a separate country the following month. However, continued border conflicts led Ethiopia and Eritrea to fight a war from 1998 to 2000. Despite the war's end, boundary disputes persisted into the 21st century. Ethiopia also sent troops to neighboring Somalia from 2006 to 2009 to help defend that country's transitional government against rebel forces. This action heightened the existing tensions with Eritrea, which supported Somalia's rebels. Ethiopia, meanwhile, had approved a new constitution in 1994. Upon its proclamation in 1995, the country officially became the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Melis became prime minister in the new government. His party, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, remained in power in the 2000s. Melis was re-elected in 2000, 2005, and 2010. The elections of 2005, however, were marred by widespread allegations of fraud. Massive protests broke out in Addis Ababa, and the ensuing clashes between protesters and security forces left more than three dozen people dead and hundreds injured. In the wake of the demonstrations and rioting later in the year, the government detained thousands of citizens, including activists, journalists, and legislators. The elections of 2010, by contrast, were largely peaceful. Following Melis's death on August 20, 2012, he was succeeded by the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Haile Mariam Desalegn. You can subscribe to support our channel and turn on the notification bell to be notified of new videos.